Yo, 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 this is Steve back with another episode of the Black Superheroes Matter podcast. And today we're actually doing something a little bit different because I also have another podcast that's out called PDX Black Rose. And it's meant to highlight black movers and shakers in Portland. And in this one, we'll do a little bit of a mashup. And so we have Dylan Muldrew, who is a Portland based artist who is a underground comic connoisseur he was a rapper he's an illustrator a traditional illustrator and he focuses on creating stories and comics focused around science fiction and horror and it's meant to be a surreal escape from the pressures of being black in america and i felt like he's sort of the epitome of the intersections of those two podcasts where he's in portland moving and shaking, doing the things that he does as a black creator. And he's also a, you know, he's a he's a black creator in comics and in cartoons. And so I'm excited for you to get to know him, check out his story. And, uh, you know, without further ado, let's get it started. I wanted to take a break from the episode to let you know that we have some merch that is available. Over at Illtopia Studios, you can find the Black Superheroes Matter art book, which is a collection of illustrations that reimagine your favorite superheroes through the eyes of children of color. We also have a bunch of sticker packs, over 120 different sticker designs of your favorite superheroes. More importantly, we have our Color Me Super coloring book series. Definitely check out the merch at shop.iltopia.com or blacksuperheroesmatter.com. And now back to the episode. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Christian. And today we have Dylan Muldrew and Hello. yeah, you know, like it, it's a, you know, it, it's, we're getting at the end of summertime and going into the fall season and everything. And, you know, like, how, how are you feeling about things right now? I'm feeling pretty good. You know, um, I'm kind of a, kind of a, uh, a, a, um, a homebody. So, you know, I've been definitely enjoying the last couple of years <laughs> getting, getting better with the art, just enjoying my, you know, getting better. Uh, knowing myself and everything yeah 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 it's a it's definitely I would say for like us creatives the the fact that like you know the pandemic has forced us to sort of take a step back and yeah not feel so uncomfortable about it because you know whenever you like around people that like kind of like being out and like going to like bars or like all that type of stuff it's like oh you want to just sit out the house and draw like you just, you just, that's what you're gonna yeah. do <laughs> yeah so it, now it's, it's like it's definitely put you in a situation it's like now nah, i can just like i can just chill and ain't nobody really you know it's bothered. socially like, acceptable right yeah, yeah. like it, it's more socially <laughs> acceptable i feel i feel like like being into like the things that like we grew up on right like anime and freaking uh-huh. drawing and comic books and all those things as we got yeah. older those things became more acceptable and now the things that like we sort of we're sort of on the fringes for doing is more mainstream now and yeah it, yeah it, it's funny to see that um kind of like that progression especially with like uh with like black panther and everything just like um because i don't because i went to see blade when it came out and like that was like yeah like right? and it wasn't it wasn't nobody like dressing up in costumes or like you know especially like whole families and stuff like that like especially whole black families like that was a star wars thing so that like yeah yeah was, exactly like, that's about yeah yeah yeah, it was, it was it was definitely a Star Wars thing. And then uh, and then, yeah, you know, like things just sort of changed, like cosplaying became more popular, uh, uh, especially with the Internet and everything, just like, you know, becoming like sort of like a like a it's kind of weird to say, kind of like a singular world or something like that. Yeah. It's kind of everybody kind of like blends together. Yeah, I think it like the world just gets smaller and uh-huh. in, a, in a way that in a way in which like you know, typically like growing up, like you were the only kid in like your old school or your own class that like was into that stuff. And now you not some I got I wasn't the only kid because I knew kids that were like that were like cooler than me and that were like kind of like the tougher kids and they knew the same stuff that I knew, but it was just wasn't they had to hide it. So like it's like yeah. it'll be funny because <laughs> like when we get like when I like be we be uh, when we be by ourselves, it'd be like um, okay, we like watching Dragon Ball Z, or we like we watching like anime or just cartoons or random stuff. But then we get around other people, it's like you, you know you kind of just ignore that, <laughs> you just put that to the side. Yeah, yeah. especially for like, the kids. Yeah, I was uh, 
I think for me growing up, it was uh, it was it was Beyblade and it was uh, Damn. it was Beyblade and it was Yu Gi Oh. Those yeah, two, yeah, like, for me, I was you, about to you, say Yu Gi Oh. I was definitely you know about to say you Yu-Gi-Oh. you had you had to have the Beyblades because like they was just like and you would I would where where would I find them at? I would go. It was like Walmart and Toys R Us were like my go to spots for that, and then uh, and then Zoids. Remember, uh-huh. uh, remember, like the Zoid models. Uh, they used yeah, to be, like, I still, still um, bro. Hold on, hold on. I got. Let me show you these little. These shits right here, the little model kits. Yo, yeah. The little Gundam, the little Gundam that yeah, they, they just, like to this day, like most were like, man, it's still fun. Like just like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, and, and I was surprised. Like I tried to find because you know I'm an adult and I got money now, right? So yeah, I could yeah. like actually buy all the stuff that I couldn't get. I can't believe how expensive like freaking like Zoids in particular. Like Zoids are freaking expensive now. Yeah, those like, like old like, just, like things from my childhood, old video games, old like yeah toys, especially like, like those spy, like spider-man toys that like like you know them like things that used to bend at the arms and at the fingers and like <laughs> them should be like 60 dollars now just for like yeah it's like i swear hit. there was a like uh there were a couple of model sets that i know were like used to be like 30 dollars and now yeah. they're like one they're over 100 and i'm like dude like it's weird like just don't it's, to look at it <laughs> <laughs> yeah like it, it's it's just weird but uh but i mean you know that i guess that's the that's what happens you know this yeah. that's why people collect these things when they first come out because the value of them increase and all that stuff and so uh, uh-huh. like it, it just sucks that like i got to like figure out what's the new thing now to sort of collect because all my stuff that i appreciate it is <laughs> Not, I mean, they, like now, they've already like you know way like, way too it's just unreasonable like why this is like this, now this is unreasonable it's like an irresponsible purchase for like this like yeah <laughs> three hundred dollar yeah. whatever yeah yeah and so uh it, it's a but it, it's i'll take it you know like it, it just means that the stuff that i cared about that like i could have had to hide hide behind is a value now and so it's like i feel validated that like oh yeah you know i was into that too you know back when it was a thing right uh-huh. so it's uh but you know how like so yeah what i mean you know what do, what are you doing as a yeah what are you just doing these days like are you are you are you writing stories are you are you creating oh, work i just finished this um hold on i don't know if you can can i flip this around yeah i just finished this uh this is my first book that i put together uh just it's, it's I, I like comic like magazines this is i kind of okay. from um i don't know have you heard of heavy metal yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. These like, uh, where are they at? Uh, just so people can see these like, uh, it's like these short story magazines from the seventies. It's I think this mm. is a, um, this might be a um, what's his name? Frank Frank Franzetta. I think that's how you say it. Um, he's like a painter. I think this is one of his. He did like a lot of the covers for like these old like sci-fi magazines. But this is kind of like what inspired. Um, a lot of like my work i guess you'd say the uh the first story is like a um uh, hold on pretty much it's a uh uh it's kind of like a wasteland in, in in a way like the like to say the world is like um has kind of depleted of, of natural resources and especially from africa specifically so um they've kind of had to like find like a device to kind of regulate the atmosphere and like this just uh to um to kind of bring life back but this is like my first story so like the um it's kind of jumbled I was more focused on um the uh the pictures more to say or just like the images and making sure like things at least sounded like somewhat cohesive you know yeah um so from my first I get like a lot of um my inspiration or say like uh or so just how I like kind of figured it out, like just learn it from, I don't know if you, you heard of Steve, Steve Ditko, most like yeah. probably, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so for a lot of these images, I went back, you know, it was just read as you can see, I don't know if you, hold on. Just to get inspiration and just kind of just even to figure out like, cause um, I come from my like hip hop and just like being a rapper. So comic books was kind of like a new thing 
for me just kind of like figuring out how to how to put a story together or even like how to um how to print it how to just like how to do all the type of stuff so a lot of um uh, panels are just like pages i get inspiration from like the just the you know just the greats and just like the people that did it first so here's um give me just a second i'm gonna find because i took this from a, a certain page Uh, I should have had up. Any, anywho, I'm not gonna say I waste time. Um, this is like a, um, I, inspired by like a like a Spider Man page from a Steve Ditko, Ditko comic. Okay. And yeah. So just to kind of just you know just like a little quick walk through, but um, like a lot of sci fi stories like inspire me. Like uh, they're just like short stories. Okay. Okay. And so are you? You're writing, illustrating, and doing pretty much everything from yes. start to finish. Yeah, yeah, from yeah, start to finish. Hmm. hmm. And so, like, how, like, what actually, like, got you into, like, actually wanting to take on all those roles? Because it's like, you know, each one of those roles is a, it requires a different level of skill. Yeah, yeah. That like, um, time, just, right? It, yeah, yeah. This it definitely took me a long time to do my first one for the simple fact that, um, just I didn't know, like, when to when I was supposed to write, and then when I was supposed to like draw or like okay is it is it done now do i start the inks and like do i like color it through the computer do i do like watercolors and stuff like that so just like uh but one the, the person that kind of mainly influenced me to like to kind of to really make that transition and to even uh give me like inspiration to do other something other than rap and still like be in that like in the hip-hop space was i know you heard of ed pisker so uh the, yeah mm -hmm. yeah these joints right here these um so people can see these uh hip hop family tree comics. Oh, it's yeah, just like an yeah. anthology of just like um or just hip hop, just like in a very detailed, like um very serious kind of almost like a textbook sort of fashion, but just like in, in comic book form. And yeah, this is kind of like I kind I like superheroes, but I kind of like this the study and that kind of comes with like these kind of projects where like you gotta like I, I know he's he's done a lot of interviews with people and just like it's a lot of like very off like just like information you wouldn't find like anywhere else so just like get yeah, that type of stuff was like pretty cool to me that's kind of like how i got the inspiration for this um for the next story because this is uh i did like three stories in this in this first one and this one is um hold on this one is uh based on a uh a space station that was created after zombia got independence and i think about 1964 and so dude was like trying to, um, he was like a science teacher that was trying to like, uh, trying to compete with like, like Russian space stations and like the US, you know, is like the kind of like the space age at the time. So like, but they, you know, Time Magazine that went out there and like did this whole interview thing and it ended up being like a whole, like, I don't want to say like a joke, but like he just wasn't, you know, it's like kind of, it takes a lot to like have a NASA. <laughs> yeah <laughs> after especially after getting independence from like you know the like mad years but he you know he's, he has like kids rolling down hills and like these like makeshift like astronaut suits and like kind of like you know people are like kind of making fun of them and these they're doing like these flips and stuff like that so yeah and this is um i don't know if zombia's in i don't know what country that is or like i don't know if it's the same it, it has the same name or what i think it's like the congo or something like that somewhere around in that that region but yeah, just like these short scientific stories are just like actual, like, you know, I get a lot of inspiration from like real events, and like history and stuff like that, the science. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's so, it, it reminds me of this concept of uh, Afrofuturism, if you're yeah. familiar with that, where- Not, not really, but you know. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely look into it because that's essentially sort of the foundation of the work that you're doing where uh -huh. it's really looking at um, creating stories that are focused around, you know, Black identity and, and essentially Black mythology. And, mm -hmm. and if yeah. you think, looking at, looking at, you know, exploring the concept of what if in these different yeah, scenarios. Exactly, exactly. Right? yeah, yeah. Like, so, um, but lately I've been working on a story um, 
it's like the, it's like a like a female ninja clan of and they like hunt down George Zimmerman. It kind of sounds a little crazy, but this like it's just I like, mean that is the that is a great premise for a story. Yeah, I just, it's just like, like what, I just put that out there, just as a what if, like they're just like you know, just like and just like different things like that. It's just like what what does like a um what does like a like a like a black future look like and like even if it mm -hmm. is kind of a little twisted and like fucked up you know <laughs> yeah yeah i mean but that that's it's a, this is all storytelling and they all have these like messages and it's all entertainment behind it right and so yeah. it's like why 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 can't we come up with these different things right you mm -hmm. know like other cultures have, i mean spider-man right like what happens if a radioactive spider just bites you you get spider powers Woo! and now yeah. you're spider-man right like it, it's why can't that why uh why can't it be as fantastical as that uh yeah. but stuff that's but stuff that's and, and relatable tell, to black people know, another thing about spider-man and to tell our story in a certain way because spider-man is like you think you had you had like superman he, he was like you know he had like all these like random ass powers and it wasn't really as cohesive as a, as a story as like as spider-man because you think he how many uh, black kids you know that like take care of like an old grandparent or like you know i gotta like yeah. you know they're in high school they got to get a job. They got to like, you know, and it like it really tells like, like I don't know if he was doing it on purpose, but it kind of really tells like the inner city like American kid story of like trying like mm -hmm. struggling and kind of like needing a superpower to like feel you know kind of like something else. But yeah, they I don't yeah. know how I was going with I, that. I, I think for us on the West Coast, it, it's we that's something that like resonates with like black people in general. Right. Uh -huh. But I think uh, I think on the East Coast, because it's, you know, the East Coast has been around a lot longer and mm -hmm. and, you know, New York and all those things that there's a lot of different overlaps in uh, in culture. Right. Yeah. And so yeah, uh, stuff that we typically assume is just sort of like a black experience uh, is also, you know, kind of an immigrant experience or whatever. But but in, but in that vein, right, like if you take yeah. a, if you you know, outside of Miles Morales, right? Like there wouldn't be any representation that said like, oh yeah, this really speaks to us. You know, we yeah. sort of have to, we sort of have to make the connections ourselves opposed to it just being implied, right? Uh -huh. And uh, and I think just like being able to present something or create something that doesn't force the reader to imply, but really just sort of admire and, and witness. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's yeah. so powerful. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I feel you, yeah, damn. I never heard anybody say it like that, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you know, I do, I do yeah. this stuff too, man. <laughs> but uh, but you know, it, it's a yeah. I I always have a I always have an admiration um for people that just sit just wake up one day and just say, hey, I'm gonna just do this and I'm gonna learn the skills to do it because if you get if you're able to take on these different roles and and create a project and finish it right mm -hmm. like the act of just finishing it and, and and seeing the idea through i mean that's just really powerful yeah right? it's, it's empowering yeah, you draw it you draw it what's funny is like i drew it and then i thought it was done and then i went to kinko's and i realized <laughs> i have to explain how to put a book together like i have to i have yeah. to say you put this page on the opposite page and not this and i was like so jumbled i was like oh oh <laughs> they never like 10 minutes like trying to explain to him how to put this book yeah. together like if I wanted it like a um, if I wanted like an actual bind, if I wanted just like staples, and Dude, just like binding, what paper, that, yeah. that is a whole binding is a whole new thing. <laughs> like, yeah. like yeah, because you a, um, you draw, it's just like you like um, I had to like you got to pay attention because at first um, I was just like just kind of like freehanding it, but then I mm -hmm. had to make a template like because you know these panels are kind of set up a certain way. To where yep. there's like a good amount of space to where the binding doesn't like yeah it's over or anything like that and it just everything kind of looks cohesive and like i had to like kind of get a ruler out and just make a template of just like so just to make sure i'm like making the same panel grid every time and just like yeah but at pisker's like show he does this like um this uh cartoonist k fat thing that should, like helps me a lot just like you know just like little things like that just taking pointers yeah it, it, it's a it's this is that the, for that very reason is why I moved to digital because yeah. you you just get templates and you're just like okay cool uh, I get to focus on the story rather than all the technical stuff I think when it comes to I think when it comes to uh, binding and like printing books so I I used to print and like bind my own books 
And so oh, I used wow. to do all that stuff by hand uh, because it ended up being cheaper, ended up being cheaper um, in the long run. And it gave me a lot more flexibility than doing like print on demand stuff. Uh, and so, uh, cause I, I found that like, I would use non-standard, I would try to use like a non-standard measurement for my book. And uh -huh. so in order to get that cut, it, it would just cost a lot of money just to get yeah. like, the first print done. And, yeah, it's just and, like you go over like one inch and it's like, it's, yes. it's like $40 more. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And so it's like, that's, yeah. that's like two, that's like two book prints right there. Yeah. And so, and so, uh, and so I uh, started exploring a lot of, uh, a lot of variety of, um, you know, treating, treating the book making process as an extension of the art form, right? Yeah, that's Where, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had to, uh, uh, oh, keep going. I'm sorry for me to cut you off. Oh yeah, it's uh, just like all the way down to like the paper, right? You know, yeah. like if there was like a if there was like a mock newspaper in the book, then like what would it look like to have like newsprint as uh -huh. like that yeah. paper stock for that and stuff? So, uh, and, so and it attracts a certain kind of reader too, to like the newsprint yeah. and like mm -hmm. gloss paper or just like so yeah, whatever like you you choose. Yeah, but um, I definitely had to uh, I had to because like because of the color thing, just seems like it was like a little expensive. So this yeah. next. Comic. Um, let me show you. Hold on. Well, just color in general is like eight times more expensive than like freaking regular black and white. Like yeah, in general, this is, this is one I've been working on. Um, the last couple, like just the last week or so, and um, as you can see, it's way more black. Oh like, yeah, way, yeah, just like way more. Um, they're just not really trying to like rely on color and just mm -hmm. just trying to find. Yeah, just trying to get better with like um just like, you know, anatomy and just like different, just like taking just the drawing a little more serious. Have yeah, you pretty... found that like the uh, the transition from like color comics to black and white, it, it requires kind of a different approach to drawing? Um, yes, uh, I can't, can I, uh, hmm, let me. Yeah, because you in, in in spaces where there would normally be, because it's just weird just to put black everywhere. I guess it's not real. It's just yeah. I just it's just like a um. It's almost like you have to rely on the lighting, and just yeah. like um. Huh? Yeah. It's just like because uh, you see these different um, you got to put more emphasis into these like kind of like these little detailed like lines here and stuff like that where like it shows like the wrinkles in the shirts and mm -hmm. just like just paying attention to more like um just facial details and just like you know just like uh yeah and then trying to fill up the um trying to do more filling up the actual panel and just like making it like look more, look more alive and just like yeah but uh, yeah color is definitely um it can be a, a bit of a crutch that yeah. I've, I've heard yeah I mean, I've used, I, I take, I used to take pride in just being like, well, you know, my line work isn't that great and, and stuff, but like, I could, I could, you know, I could distract you with a, a whole bunch of different colors, yeah. to distract all those imperfections. Uh, but, you know, on the flip side, it's like, if you put a lot of color on it, then on the back end, you're going to have to pay for that in printing. But mm -hmm. like with black and white stuff, you know, it costs a lot less. It's just, creatively you have to approach it in a way that makes it like makes it look good right like you know yeah. every manga that you pick up is going to be black and white and just the line work in that is just really really nice and yeah. and so it's like you know yeah, I, i've grown I, to appreciate that a lot yeah what i've got my uh what really inspired me to do like black and white is um these i don't know if you heard of ken landgraf he's like uh, um, he New York City Outlaw comics. It's like these uh these older hold on. Uh there's like mm, these older yeah. kind of like independent style, just these random stories and just like, you yeah. know, it's like madness. But they're just like the, the black and white is just like so, you know, when you think of a sky, you don't think of like a black sky and just like, you know, just all this like. It's just this is like a, th a different way of drawing, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely like it definitely stands out like. Way more. And then it, it makes you kind of like pay like gray tones and stuff like that. And like 
even like using Sipitone and like just different um, things you can do to fill space. Yeah, it's like, it, yeah, see, it, like I, that's I feel like it even... makes you very creative because you you find ways to it, it, you're looking at the overall composition, right? Like each one of uh -huh. these details oh, really <laughs> gotta, serves a, serves a purpose. Star in his head. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's like each one of these just serves a purpose. And so when you're when you're creating a panel or a page, like you you're creating good with intent because you don't want to uh -huh. black out the page. You just want it to you want the line work to uh, to be used as a storytelling device. Yeah, exactly. I don't even know like you like this background like this like kind of like screen. I don't even know how to do that. Like, how would you? It's like these older like um, comic book techniques. Yeah, so where, some, you're, where you're where you're with like a exacto knife, and you're with like a you know yeah, a whole yeah, bunch yeah. of different like films and, and and panels, and then you're just you're sitting there just cutting and yeah, I've, I've seen a few people. Um, uh, I've seen a few people work on that type of stuff, and I'd be like, "Damn, that's a, that's a, that's some patience right there." Like, it, yeah, it's that, that's funny because that that's what I come from is like the, the kind of like the physical, like the cutting stuff out. But then I look at like artists like Todd McFarlane, and just yeah. like, um, <laughs> it's just like, how do you just sit there on the um on the screen? You can see like because his stuff is like a lot. Um, a lot cleaner is like these like yeah. older on comics and stuff like that and uh yeah this one's this one's taped up but, uh, yeah even kind of um a lot of people that do stuff on the computer tend to like go towards like the glossier paper and it's just like a different you know it's not yeah. as like um I think because of his materials and what he's using, he doesn't have like the, he has the, more of a freedom to kind of like it's not a traditional like book. He's just kind of mm -hmm. like does whatever because you can just like you know move it with his hands. You know, just like it's on the, like a touch screen, so it's just like or just like yeah. on a you know, just using a computer program. So this is like more freedom. You just like it's like taking the same artist but just like giving them like a thousand more tools and just like yeah. But I yeah. still lie. I can't get it to this day. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've tried to like on the iPads and stuff like that, and it just doesn't like for me. It doesn't translate the same. I don't know, but some people can do it like really well. I'm jealous. Uh, it's honestly, it is something that you kind of just have to, you kind of have to commit to, and yeah. you just be like, I'm only going to do this until I, I until I get good. Like, yeah, it, I can't it's... lie. I do get frustrated after like an hour. I just be like, fuck, fuck <laughs> this. I'm not to go draw. I'm just like with ink, regular ink. But like, man, that <laughs> it looks yeah, so it, fast. It's like I know there's a there's an artist, uh, another artist, Tom Scioli. He does like newer, um, uh, Fantastic Four comics and like uh, GI Joe, Transformers stuff. And he does like uh, like comp like stuff on the iPad. And it looks okay. fun, but then I tried to do it on other people's stuff, and it just like it's like it's like I can't draw. Like it just doesn't. Yeah. Like, same way. I I've been trying to. Uh, I just got an iPad Pro. I normally work on like a PC and a Cintiq, so I have like a big Cintiq that I've been a. Uh, I've been using for a minute and I love it. It's, it's great. And so I just started using the iPad and I, I haven't really been sold on sort of like creating on the iPad with it, but I've been looking for like animation software. And so, uh, and so I'm not used to sort of like the, the clean line work of, of to work on an iPad, but to like sketch out like an animated scene, you know, you don't need like clean line work to, to do drafts of animation. You just need to just be able to just scribble some stuff and then make a whole bunch of frames and yeah. so uh really so huh. I'm, yeah yeah it's it's a uh, it's it's very loose it's like it's a very loose process that's, that's weird because i you know i like you ever see uh you ever see that show suit like super jail and like those like uh, crazy like um it's like a, like those adult swim like like cartoons and stuff like that oh yeah 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 mm -hmm. um, like a lot, of it just looks like so so much work. It's just like all these, like even though it's like a thirty minute show, it's just like it's just a, it's a lot of it's show. a lot of it's a lot of drawing. Um, well, they they've made it easier because of like you know motion tweening and and like there's 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 ways to shortcut it for like okay. those animated shows. But uh, but yeah, twenty four frames per second, and and you know <laughs> 60 seconds in a you know 60 seconds in a minute and 30 minute show so like you kind of just do the math and that's that's the expectation that you're looking in terms of frames and uh -huh. so uh 
as an animator, I've been an animator for almost 10 years. Uh, oh, wow. And it, it's, a uh, you know, for me, I don't bat an eye on that anymore. Like at first it's like, oh snap, I got to draw a thousand frames just to get two seconds worth of animation. Yeah. It's like, I, I don't really need to, I, you know, there's the software makes it easier. Um, yeah, okay. But if you like look back at like all the stuff that like Disney animation was doing and all that stuff back in like the fifties and sixties and seventies, man, they were, they were innovating. They were sitting there, you know, finding ways to do camera angles with different things. And this is still just drawing. And so I was like, oh crap. You know, like this is, you know, the biggest like technology has always been there, you know, and so uh, and so it's just a matter of how do you use the technology to help your workflow specifically uh, mm -hmm. that becomes the ultimate, you know, the ultimate yeah. challenge. And so uh, like now that I got an iPad, I'll see how this works, you know, like if yeah. not, then at least, you know, I, I'm in school still, too. And so. I just use that for note taking at the moment, but uh, but finding ways to be creative with these tools is always a it's always a journey that I I I always I I just appreciate because it because it just makes things if you figure it out it makes things so much easier. Oh my gosh, like Definitely. it's just you got to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Yeah, it's and so how um like how did you get started in really just like creating just like one to be creative and and like telling stories really because like you know we all have like we all have our ideas that like we want to just sort of create a cartoon or have you know a world that you know people buy into or video games or x y and z like what, yeah, I, like I what think got you into this i've always like been like like super creative like my, my mom keeps like a lot of like my mom has like a whole art gallery of just like stuff i've done like over the years like in her living room and like even like in random boxes she'll have like stuff out for like old comic books i made in like second grade just like <laughs> random stuff that i even like you know because i used to um i was doing like a lot of like like i was like a lot of rapping a lot of hip-hop before like a couple mm -hmm. years ago and just like i just got to a to a point where um where i kind of felt um like i just didn't want to go out every night and i just kind of felt like i was doing a disservice just like kind of like having the attitude about like doing something I didn't like necessarily like want to do all the way. So just like, just the maneuver in the comic books, like felt like a natural kind of transition. And just like, um, damn, what was, what was the question? I'm, I'm up. <laughs> no, just, yeah. Just like how did, like, what was sort of the catalyst that made you want to, you know, take on these various hats to just like tell your own stories. Like, cause you know, you're, it's not like you're just writing your drawing, like you, you're doing everything right. Like you're creating you know, a body yeah. of work that people can experience in like for, you know, uh, a lot yeah, of it you're doing sort of by yourself, right? Yeah, but I always, I always been creative. It's just like, a, um, I have a, I have a, a vivid imagination and I just like think about like a lot of like my, my brain just kind of just like goes all the time and I'm just kind of thinking about a lot of things. So it's almost like a need kind of like, cause I was making a lot of songs and it was like, okay, I can't like really rap about a space because I'm then I'm watching movies about alien just like <laughs> alien like Star Wars I can't like rap about a space station or just like a, like certain kid you know it's just like I was having a hard time just like kind of translating certain ideas and just like the comic books and just like I was I was making videos at the same time too and it just like felt like such it just felt like a lot easier just to like get like ideas out it wasn't even like necessarily like a, um like a like a conscious thing it was just like okay so what Okay, I had this idea of like a like a like two like these two black like scientists like kind of like on some alien stuff like, like you know just like kind of like I don't I don't really know exactly what I'm trying to do but I'm trying to do something on the lines of that and just like how, how what's the best way of like getting this idea out and just a comic book just seemed like the the, the most um like it just seemed like the like the most fulfilling and it just ended up I, I couldn't even like explain it just like it just kind of like it's just snow, the snowball effect is one day I just ended up at a comic book store and just like, I bought one, I bought three and it just like, it just kept going. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't even, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it, it's, a. Uh, I think it's, it's, you know, always looking back at the journey, it, it's, I always, I, I think I'm at the point now where I just appreciate you know, having the ability to just be like, oh yeah, I, 
I remember when I got just started into these things and look where I'm at now, right? Like it, it's, yeah. um, you know, I think it, it's, you know, I, I feel fortunate enough to just like be able to just say like, okay, you know, I've, I've, I took this path and I didn't really know where it was going. And now I put the time in and now I'm actually able to like see, you know, these ideas clearly, or I could actually hold these ideas in my hand you know, because, yeah, uh, because I worked on a project a way that just things come out smoother, just like just just learning how to just like, you know, so now it's not it's not taking like a year for me to just like to finish one book or just like, you know, or just to finish a page or something like that. It's not yeah. taking that. Long. So, yeah, definitely. But yeah, it just it like, feels a lot better. Just like um, just being able to get like certain ideas out and just like um, because I was young, I used to read like a lot of you know, just children's books and stuff like that, just like Dr. Seuss and just like, it's like, had, you know, I've always, it's always just been in the background. So just like, it just, just feel like this is a better, you know, better transition in rap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a, it's definitely more sustainable. It's less. It's As you in less... a lot of different rooms, like, um, cause I got, I have conversations with like architects and just like stuff like that. And just like, just rent not you know, just, uh, it's like just, just able to talk to different people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, like I feel like the 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 foundation of the idea is always the same for me going into it, but the output, the the medium in which people like experience that idea, is uh you know opens up a you know just a market or you know an audience that otherwise wouldn't see my stuff if I was if I was sticking to a particular medium, right? Mm -hmm. Like I used to I used to be a painter and I used to airbrush. And so it's like, yes, I could sort of like airbrush stuff and people would appreciate it, right? But like yeah. when I create, but when I animate and when I'm, you know, creating, you know, cartoons and stuff like that or comic books, uh, that same idea that I would airbrush or explore through airbrush, you know, through a book format uh, just has a lot more reach. And, um, and I could always go back and airbrush. I'll probably airbrush a cover or something like that. But uh -huh. like, you know, it's all for me. I've I've grown to appreciate the ideas and what mediums I could use to to explore those ideas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you know, to where it's like, oh yeah, I might want to you know do something digitally. And then it's like, well, I don't I'm tired of working digitally. Let me just print something out or just work on you know a large piece of paper. Or maybe I want to print something. And all that stuff could still be part of the same idea. Um, and it's you know, I think. I think, you know, we're sort of fortunate enough to be in this in the age where we could even like consider that, right? Like just the yeah, idea just, of like yeah, considering just, it. Yeah. Because yeah. it because yeah. yeah, if this was like the 60s, we have to really, really, really want to be because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we ain't getting no money for that shit. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> it's a uh, it's like they are not they they do not care about black owned businesses, you know, the way they do now, because it, it's a uh, it's a, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, times change, right? Like, you know, the, the market, you know, to say that like, oh, you wanted to just make this freaking sci-fi Afro-futuristic story and you want it to be about black people and you wanted to explore the intersections of, you know, social issues and fantastical realism and, yeah. you know, and to, and to assume that there's an audience, that's a, that's a very new thing. Because prior to, you know, the past, what, 10 years or 20 years, you know, it was hard enough to just get a mainstream Black character, you know, to, to be widely adopted. And now we're seeing, you know, new characters that look like us, you know. Look like us and are created by us. It's not just yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. Black character. I was like, oh, this, but it's created by Todd McFarlane, even though that's cool, but it's like. It's like just to see to see somebody like I like I don't know if you know familiar with there's a there's a kind of artist Frico who does like um uh he does kind of like like an underground style like a um like kind of like uh what's his name like um like Robert Crumb type mm. of stuff oh yeah uh -huh. yeah, and, uh, uh, yeah he's like a just to see like that somebody that's not he's he's not like a nerd he's just he's just a cool dude he wears gold teeth. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, yeah, it's like they make kind of like we make comic books too. It's like it's mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's like a lot of Instagram is definitely like kind of like brightened or just like widened the spectrum of like what a comic book artist looks like. And like it's not exactly. just like it's not just about superheroes, it's not just about like it's not just like one single solitary thing. It's just like a, you know, 
there's a lot of things that you can do and there's a lot of things that be a lot of stories that haven't been told especially by us yeah that yeah that need to be told it's like a lot of stuff that needs to be done and just like in other spaces like creatively other mm -hmm. than um, other than music yeah yeah and and i think it's a you know we're, we're definitely seeing that although there is one i would i have yet to see a big buff like a big buff like black guy making like hello kitty stuff <laughs> yeah like just yeah. you know that like that that would that would sort of that that story just sort of writes itself right there right like just uh, yeah. what would that what would that dynamic look like of like the hood is hello kitty thing you'll ever find you yeah, know? exactly it, man. that's why yeah, I just feel like because of the like, I want to say that like I don't I don't know if the narrative is the right word or just like kind of um just like the expectations that come with being just being black and how you're supposed to just a lot of that stuff like doesn't come out just because it just gets like kind of suppressed. It's just it like gets lost in the stereotypes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like yeah, like just um I just remember how like, just being a skateboarder growing up and just like just being yeah. called white. Yeah, Look at like, Tony Hawk. Like Tony Hawk <laughs> changed the game. Like Tony Hawk Pro Skater changed the game. Yeah. What was it? Uh, with the uh, Kareem Campbell. Kareem Campbell. Yes. Like <laughs> yeah, that and like. Terry Kennedy and just like the whole there yeah, just like changed just over the years definitely like made it a lot easier Stevie Williams made it a lot easier yep. for us just other um other aspects of life just to, to exist freely without being judged you know yeah I think it was like the the most formative like games that I could think of that uh made it acceptable uh to get into extreme sports where uh where Tony Hawk pro skater um for skateboarding and then uh, this game called SSX, which was like yeah, a snowboarding yeah, yeah. game, SSX, uh, SSX Tricky. Yeah. Like those two games, because the, the soundtrack for SSX Tricky was Run DMC. And so, uh -huh. uh, and so, and the soundtrack for Tony Hawk was like rock and was like, and it had like, it had like niggas listening to rock and like, like, you know, yeah, like, right. <laughs> like, yeah, that, and, that um, would be listening to. yeah, and uh, and then, um, and then like two other ones were Crazy Taxi. Did you remember Crazy Taxi? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Like, yeah. I'm, a, that, man, I'm, a, I'm a super video game nerd. So I, I got a lot of, a lot of shit that yeah. you're saying. Actually so like Crazy <laughs> Taxi, that like the theme song for Crazy Taxi, whenever that would play, uh, that that always resonated with me. And then um, uh, just Rock Band, like the game Rock Band. Because uh -huh. remember they did that whole like mashup where they actually started having like hip hop songs. Yeah, and DJ, yeah, it's a it's a DJ would, thing. I did the DJ yeah, thing for a little bit. The DJ thing. <laughs> and so it's like you know, freaking trying to like get you know five stars on you know like a Stevie Nicks song, and then you move over to uh like a Snoop Dogg song and trying to give five stars on that. It, it like yeah. it was just like you know the reason I know non black music now is because I played those games, yeah. and and the reason it sort of resonates now. Uh, because it's because of video games and because yeah, man, that, that shit, gave you the that license good, man like like from like thinking about like being a little kid and like how much i used to get harassed by like my cousins and just like people like <laughs> saying slick stuff like oh you do this i mean you don't know where you come from or just like little yeah. stuff like that and now just like it just feels good to like just to be cool and just like for just for a lot of that that shit to just like kind of just like go away and just like people yeah. don't even like look at it like that anymore it's not such a, like a separation yeah like it, it's a uh, you know just times change you know yeah. times change and and i think that you know the conversations we're have we're having now are like when's gonna when's the next like black superhero movie coming out or you know who's making this or who's making that uh, -huh. uh opposed to you know sort of just sort of the expectations that you sort of uh you know we sort of grew up on and so yeah. you know i i yeah I'm that glad that I'm able to... cool man black people making horror movies yeah, That's right. Good. Like, like candy. <laughs> like, remember Candyman? Like, Candyman. Yeah, Man, like Candyman yeah. and Leprechaun. Those are the two movies that, like, I remember. Leprechaun in the Hood. Yeah, like, exactly. Leprechaun yeah. in the Hood, and uh, and Candyman were like the two movies that I remember growing up. It was actually it was, like, scary. It was, like, yeah, they were yeah. like that, and uh, and Tales from the Hood. Yeah, uh, yeah, bro. Dude. I had it on V. Like, my dad had that recorded on VHS, right? And I, I like, I watched it one night, not knowing what it was. That I was, at me. I was, <laughs> I was like, look at to this day, I, cause I, I, yeah, to this day, Leprechaun in the Hood and Tales from the Hood 
are are two movies that I was like, I can't like I remember having nightmares the yeah. day that I watched those when I was like freaking Going five, six years old. <laughs> it was it was horrible. Like yeah. I was, to this day. And so and to see those things sort of like, well, they haven't brought back Tales from the Hood, which is one they have to do. But uh, to see Candyman coming back. And to see it sort of have this sort of like modern twist to it and, and not not have it be sort of uh, grindhousey, right? Uh-huh. Like it, where it's where it's kind of like a low budget, you know, yeah. oh, you know yeah. like those exactly. like sort of like low yeah. budget movies and stuff. Like exactly. it's uh, like I to see those at like a high quality and people taking it seriously uh-huh. when uh when you know it, it was really only like, like right, like yeah, it, like when like those types of things you would only know around like black circles right uh-huh. like, you wouldn't really see those uh things being understood or you know widely adopted or accepted uh in other in other spaces outside of like you know black spaces right yeah so, uh, and so it, it's it's good to see that stuff sort of you know cut, seeing the line like getting the respect that it deserves you know exactly like it. it's a you know what a time to be alive i appreciate it <laughs> for real yeah yeah and so uh and so with that um you know where can people find your stuff um new um i got a website that's it's kind of, it's under construction right now because um i've been busy painting these pots so i haven't had a chance to like um i've been revamping my comic book at the moment just getting like a working on a new cover and then i'm, I'm adding like a new story so, but I have a website, just newafricacomics.com and it's comics with, with an with a X, like C-O-M-I-X. This is, and then uh, N-U, newafricacomics.com. And um, within like the next month or so, it should be backing up and running. But yeah, that's that's where I sell my comics and just like a lot of just original art and just pottery and stuff like that. Just like, you know, different stuff I'm painting. So yeah, that's where you okay. can check me out. And then on Instagram too, I'm, I'm, I'm at New Africa Comics. And then I'm yeah working on the Patreon, a lot of that stuff. Just the Instagram is the main thing. I do have the comics, yeah. but just like you know, just just keep in touch. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that they have a. I know that they have like the like the Instagram shop and stuff like that. I haven't really played around with it, but yeah, I that, either. people have been telling like, me about it. It's a. It's a. I don't know. I, I feel like the pandemic definitely like gave license for more like platforms to build up for like e-commerce and stuff like that. But yeah. then I also feel like it sort of muddied the, like it adding so many features kind of bloats the experience of using certain apps, right? Yeah. And so it, and so it, it's a, but cool, yeah. So we got, so we got the website, we got Instagram. We'll definitely, we'll definitely start to, uh, you know, push people that way. And uh, as they, you know, in the descriptions and, and some of the promos that we'll do for the for this episode of the podcast, and yeah. then. Uh, and yeah, you know, like I definitely appreciate it. Um, I definitely yeah. appreciate the time and uh, yeah, I appreciate and- it. Man. My main, my main comp, my goal for comic books is just like creating like just like you know, like you said, man, like black futurism, just like just like yeah. that imaginative world that like you know, there's all the stories that have never that we all talk about just amongst ourselves mm-hmm. that never get told. Just like the craziest, what if so and so does this? What if this happens? Like. What if it was a world with just all black people, just like weird stories like that? Like that's like the main thing that I want to like, that I want to like work on and, and do stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. Just, just to get yeah. my mission story out there. Yeah, and and it's Mr. like you Thanks. know all the stuff that like we know or that we're familiar with, all is you know essentially they're all stories, right? Like unless you were there, you really know. Otherwise, like everything's just a story that we tell each other and that we tell ourselves. Yeah. So why is it like? Why is it that everybody else has a license to sort of tell stories and, you know, sort of create this mythology and uh, and have pride behind it? Uh, but for us, it, we sort of have to talk ourselves into it and we have to convince people that it matters. It's like yeah. the act of telling stories and the act of putting that stuff out is what matters because it exists out there and people can, you know, appreciate it or they can do whatever they want with it. And, and so, you know, half the battle is just, you know, you know, finding the time and building up the courage to just put the story out there. And uh, yes, and, yes. and I mean, you're doing it. Which so, is different, you know. than, different than like any other kind of, any other like, you know, kind of people just like, just like just having the courage to like get past, you know, yeah. just the doubt. It's like, a, it's like a, it's like a, like a mountain. And then once you get past the mountain, it's like a whole, it's like an empty, just like yeah, plain. It's, it's like, it's a, it's a void. Yeah. Like, it's literally <laughs> a void. Like, and then people were like, oh man, 
I've been looking for something like this. I'll be like, what? Really? Yeah, like one time I, I, I wish I would have known that. <laughs> once I made the book and I got it in my hand, it's like it's like it's like a whole new feeling. It's like, oh, this mm-hmm. is like this is real. Like I can make this real. Like I can like the things in my mind like actually like can exist if I just like are diligent enough to like, you know, follow through. Yeah. 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 And it's like and I appreciate that, right? Like it, it's it's something that like as I talk to my parents, like you could tell that like they haven't had that sort of feeling. Yes. So they haven't had that, like, you know. Yeah, that- like, they, I'd be like, yo, like, dad, you can just go look that up on Google. Like, you could just, like, you know, but they don't have, like, the, like, they don't, like, like they don't, they just didn't, it's, like, grow up with that. So they just don't just, yeah. like, really understand, like, that you can, like, really just go do it. It's just unfathomable. Like, it's yeah. just, like, it's like telling them to just, like, walk on water. It's like, you can't do that. And it's like, we well, kind of can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. I feel you. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, you know, just uh, really appreciate the time. Uh, really appreciate you know just the work that you're doing, and uh, and really just excited to see to continue following it and, and seeing how uh, seeing the next release, you know, like seeing uh, seeing all the stuff that you're coming up with. And so oh, yeah, it's uh, coming soon, man. I appreciate the time. Yeah, yeah, your time, man, and especially you documenting this, like doing the doing the work, willing to do the work. Because some people just like you know don't know how to just like you know the journal there's not a lot of good journalists out there so this is definitely well, like a- hey i if i if i'm considered a journalist at this point cool <laughs> like yeah i i'm in i am uh i'm an animator that's in medical school right now so right now i'm just over here just you know i get to talk to cool people get to connect yeah. with people that are doing amazing things and so for me it's just like i'm just here to just have cool conversations and just record those and put those on the internet and so it's uh-huh. uh so if that if that's what it is I'll take it. <laughs> no word. That's yeah. what's up. But uh, but yeah, you know, really appreciate it. And uh, and with that, we will we will call it a wrap. And there we have it. That is another episode of the Black Superheroes Matter podcast in the wraps. Again, the purpose of this podcast is for people to get exposed to a variety of different things that black people are creating in the arts and entertainment industry. The goal is for this podcast to bring light to all those and those creators, because as a community, we have the opportunity to skirt some of the problems that we've seen in this day and age when it comes to expressing blackness. And so if you love this, definitely check out the more work that we're doing go to at Black Superheroes Matter, or you can go to BlackSuperheroesMatter.com to check out the blog and the write-ups that we do on these guests. And if you're so inclined, feel free to support my work at Iltopia, where we have the Black Superheroes Matter art book, the Black Superheroes Matter sticker packs, and even coloring books, activity guides. And so if you want to check that stuff out, check it out at shop.iltopia.com. It's all black owned. I might add, they're all handmade products and they're all made with love for the community that has really given me the opportunity to find my place in this world. And so again, thank you for another wonderful episode. Thank you for listening. Feel free to follow all the stuff that Black Superheroes Matter is cranking out. And excited to share another wonderful guest with you on next episode. So without further ado, thank you very much.